so before moving forward to the video i just want to clarify that my english speaking is not that fluent and i am working on that every day and the second thing is that i have first explained how does an ad card work on our local area network after that i have shown the installation process so if you are just interested in the installation process you can pretty much skip this part using just timestamp and that being said now let us move forward to the video so before understanding how does an ad card work on our local area network let us see how does a dns request flow so i have a simple picture to explain so this is the simplest picture that i can get on the internet because a lot of more things happen in the background so first of all this is the device let me just mark it a little bit okay so this is the device that you are using to visit the website so it can be your mobile your desktop your laptop that anything that you use to visit the website then we use a browser so the browser you type www.youtube.com so as soon as you type that website name it gets redirected to the dns server so what is a dns server and why do we need a dns server so first of all dns server's full form is domain name system so it consists of a list what does this list consist so this is the website name that you want to visit so now you know the destination for where you want to go but you do not know which path you should follow to reach that destination so for that you need to go to the dns server and dns server consists of the name of the domain that is this www.youtube.com so after that it will it also consists of the corresponding ip addresses that means i in google youtube.com and they are assigned ip addresses so this is let take a for example this is the ip address assigned to the youtube.com so uh, it will retrieve that ip address and it will send this as a reply to our browser now our browser know where to look for youtube.com so it will follow that path that is the ip address and reach the youtube server so this is the youtube server so after reaching that it will retrieve all the data that need to be uh, displayed on our desktop uh, so it will retrieve the thumbnail the content the caps and everything that is needed and it will also content conclude a code file so what does this code file include so the code file includes a script basically it, uh, it is a javascript file so it will render on our browser so when it will render it will collect data personalized to our device that is add um, personalized data so it will con uh, retrieve that data from our browser and it will simply request another one request to the domains that is the add domains so uh, these domains consist of different ad websites so it will just retrieve the website of the uh, of which ads needs to be shown on the website it will just send it to the reply so let us assume that this is the website that we have visited so this is the content and bunch of ads are displayed over here so this is how a normal workflow of a dns goes so let us see what will happen if we use an ad guard so when you use an ad guard it just adds a simple layer extra layer of protection between your computer and dns servers so first of all the same thing will happen the name of the domain will be sent to the ad guard so ad guard will first check that whether you are allowed to access this ad guard, uh, this domain or not because you can set different type of rules in ad guard so like the like the parental control in our routers so when it will see that now you are allowed to visit this website so it will then forward that request to the dns servers so you can choose many different type of dns servers in ad guard so i will show you in the advanced settings so in the forward videos so let us now assume that you are using this cloudflare dns server the same thing it will happen it will retrieve all the data and ip address and it will send this to the and it will then send it to the uh, computer as soon as the ip address is received it will again go to the ip address and retrieve all the data and the code file same thing will happen the code file will render on our computer but this time when the request is sent it will go through ad guard and ad guard know which domains consist at so it will simply block their access to the website and it will uh, send reply as 0 dot zero dot zero so that is nothing that means the website will uh, assume that the uh, dns server was unable to be discovered and so there is nothing to display so you will see a website with just the content that you need and there will be blank space where the ad needs to be displayed so that's pretty much how our ad guard work on our lan settings so at this point i have explained you a few things let me just show you which dns server i am using currently so just open cmd you can also check up on your computer just type yes, look up as soon as you type and hit enter so here will come the name of the dns server that you are using so i am using my raspberry pi and i have not assigned any name to it so it is showing unknown and it is also showing the ip address so this is the ip address of my raspberry pi 
so it is you know all the request of the domains are getting through the raspberry pi and add guard is also installed in this raspberry pi so i have shown you on the windows let me just show you on a linux so just open linux and open terminal sorry terminal over terminal type dig and then time sorry time dot name of the domain that you want to visit so google.com hit enter so as soon as you type this and hit enter you will see there is a answer from the domain server so what is the answer this is the ip address of the domain this is the ip domain name and this is the path we need to follow to reach that destination so this is the ip address that we have uh, got from the dns server so as you can see this is the ip address of my uh, raspberry pi through which the dns server has been accessed so i will just open the browser and i will just copy it so i will just copy this ip address and simply paste it on the browser and hit enter as soon as i hit enter see i will reach google.com so from here you can search anything so so i just type linux as you can see i can easily access by using the ip address so that's pretty much it so let us move forward to the video so let us look at some of the hardware components on which we can install our adguard home so firstly we can use our primary device so in my case the hp pavilion laptop that i use for coding ethical hacking and pen testing can be used but i do not prefer to use this type of laptops because these are power hungry laptops it uses around 150 watt adapter and you can imagine how much power it will consume if it is operated for 365 days for the power efficiency matter i do not prefer this type of laptops so according to me the second best option we have is the old laptops if you have any old laptop lying around your house and collecting dust you can pretty much use them in this type of projects because this type of old laptops uses around 65 to 45 watt adapters and they are more efficient than these modern laptops so for that reason i really prefer this type of laptops and this laptop is very much close to my heart because this is the first laptop of my life and this introduced me to the world of computer science and everything now what is i know is because of this laptop and it made me more enthusiastic about the workings of computer and everything and this is the little diy project that i built myself so this is the custom built cpu that i built from my old laptop so the third best options are the raspberry pis and i think raspberry pis are the best option for this type of projects because of the power efficiency matter because this power raspberry pi uses around 15 watt and operates around 15 watt adapters and in comparison this thing this laptop operates around 150 watts so this is more 10 times efficient than this and also don't let the tiny size fool you because this is more powerful than this 12 year old laptop so you can imagine how fast the technology is moving that the power of this big laptop is now in the palm of my hand so you can prefer according to your requirements and some other hardwares are these wi-fi adapters if you have any wi-fi adapter you can use for lower latency and the best for, uh, is the wired connection for the lower latency because wired connection have zero latency you can use them for this type of projects so that being said now let us move towards the software department
your guide or knob is back again to login into your router you need to know the ip address if you didn't you can search it on google by entering the name of your router after that you need to enter the username and the password if you are new to these settings you can find this in the back of your router after entering all these details you will get inside the router now you need to change two settings first of all you need to set the static dscp server for your raspberry pi so that every time it boots up gets the same ip address each and every time after that you need to redirect the dns server point so by default your router uses the isp provided dns server but we need to change it to our raspberry pi so these settings are pretty much differ from each and every one because the router settings are different from each and every one if you find any difficulty in changing these settings you can simply search it on youtube or google that how to set and static dscp server or change dns server on our router by entering the name of your router after changing all this we are things we are pretty much done at this point but you can change some additional settings if you want for more security and more protection over malware and different type of threats over internet so you can go through the rest of the video